freedom. It's supposed to be win-win. You're both so different, yet in some ways just the same. In unity, you find strength and solace. Together, you are ahead of the game. It's not so simple, not so straight, to surrender sovereignty, adapt your life to a benign stranger, kindred soul perhaps, who becomes a lover, a husband, a wife. How do you find the right balance between what you lose and gain? Weigh up the consequences of the decision with the special companionship you attain. Even if today it's almost perfect, and tomorrow better still, the day will inevitably come when, bo when you both have had your fill. For people, for people change, none of us stand still. Not just age, but develop in ways unforeseen. How to keep up with this creeping metamorphosis and prolong consistency with what has been? So what should we do so as not to regret? Why? Revisit the choice in the context of quest. Hold a daily referendum and realistically confirm that of all the possibilities, this is still the best. If that is the case, the outlook is good. You have been fortunate with the throw of the dice. If not, then it's time to reflect whether misery and hell is an acceptable price. <laughs> As you stare in admiration at Mandela in this famous South African square, I watch you from a cafe table and admire a woman so graceful and fair. We have statues of the heroic and the brave, of the wise, the bold and the good, but also of those abundant monsters who have imposed themselves and drunk our blood. You, my darling, with all your elegance and charm, turn heads but won't go down in history Unfair, I know, but forget what's fixed in stone. Better a living monument now than in antiquity. <laughs> of our human destiny, we reach for the stars, pursue astronomy, and inspect debris from the past, trying to establish bearings and trajectory. But do we try to reach inside ourselves? to fathom the depths, survey from pole to pole, to establish the contours of our mysterious inner world that we mechanically call our soul. To, in to understand that vital, hidden vector which forms our very essence, determining who and how we are and gives meaning to our presence. To grasp our place in time and space is the key to unraveling the universe's mystery the firm place on which Archimedes taught us to stand, our lever, knowledge, intuition, and honesty. Each one of us is a work of wonder, a unique cosmos with planets, moons, and stars, with a complex history and uncertain future, deserving exploration before we get to life on Mars. <laughs> This one has to be, I wanted to read this because I'm in the company of such a distinguished humanitarian, so this is more of a manifesto than a, a poem, but I, I was close to a sort of death-like situation a, a year ago. I, I had a pulmonary embolism. I was in a hospital in, in Johannesburg, and uh, instead of being uh, sort of sad about the whole situation, I was writing poems and trying to make sense of my life. So this one is called Lighting the Way. Tomorrow is not a given. We all have but limited time. Each day is a blessing. We are constantly in our prime. Some have longer roles, some barely a line or a sigh, for no one knows the meaning of why we're born, why we die. Many assume there's an explanation in something reassuringly mystical beyond, that all will be revealed later, once from the earth we abscond. That there's a hell and a heaven and for some, limbo in between, an eternal spiritual wonderland where souls roam free and serene. <laughs> in a light at the end of the tunnel, it's certainly comforting to believe. What if it's only the express train of time hurtling at us, the skeptics, stoics, and naive? To imagine that there's hope and clarity, not just termination of existence and a non-state, that by clutching at metaphysical straws, we can somehow escape our mortal fate. 
live equipped with reason, feelings and the will to survive, we can transcend our existential plight. By asserting our dignity and solidarity, life's absurdity, we can defy and carry the fight. Live prudently on the extended credit of time, with its variable interest rates and unknown span. Dispense with nonsense and the ubiquitous sham. Head up and do the best that you can. Do not simply follow blindly self-appointed shepherds whose salvation proclaim but who lead gullible flocks to slaughter and impose mental servitude, regardless in whose name. Make the most of it while it lasts, the here and now, before the final goodbye. Say yes to love and no to hate. Live a good life. You only have one try. The light or darkness is not what lies beyond, but what we leave behind. In the remembrance of our deeds and stance of our contribution to, to humankind. Yeah. Last one, this is a bit, sort of a dark gothic type, right, okay, but come on, you know, we're all serious people here and we, we have to think about some of these issues. Uh, we've been to see a Phantom of the Opera playing in Johannesburg, but I, I wanted to say something about sort of um, the possibility of not life beyond, but, well, you, let, let me read it. Phantoms of the Opera of Life. They are all around us, the ghosts from the past. Invisible, but always present. Not the first, and not the last. They also do not see us, though they sense that one day we'll be there, following behind, interested perhaps in what they had to say. And if you listen for a minute, you'll hear the sounds of those not yet born. For then we will be the ghosts from whom by death we were torn. Their time to leave will also come, for with life only death is certain. The cycle of appearance and disappearance through the mysterious opaque curtain. But for now we must play our own role, not knowing the content or, or letters of the script, wearing a mask to cover our mortal infirmity before we too are summoned to the crypt Phantoms from the past, ultimately that's what we'll all be, whether in some form or just memory, but in another type of continuity. And in the inscrutable vastness of the cosmos, perhaps one day, generations will be able to touch souls through time zones and parallel worlds, tapping energies and catching our probing calls. <laughs> Thank you. forward to publishing some of them in the new number. And I know you already sent me some which are already in the uh, Projet du uh, 24. And uh, if some of these I don't have yet, I need them. Now, it just occurred to me, and maybe you've noticed, that I didn't only uh, publish you in the section Poetry, I also published you in the section Epigrams. And why do I do that? Because it reminds me very much of the tradition of aphorisms and the traditions of epigram writing, for instance, in the insights from Gutenberg's of, of, uh, of Nietzsche. I mean, he uh, combines uh, just gorgeous language, which is poetic language, but with a message uh, that is more of a philosophical message than it is uh, a poem. That's why I thought that you are right there in between. And I very much identify uh, with your thoughts. Now, uh